Marshall to the stage. He's going to tell us about putting food intolerance testing to the test. Great, thank you. So, uh, yes, I'm Michael Marshall, and my talk will come up in just a second, I think. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm a, a professional full-time sceptical investigator. It's what I do for a living. I investigate extraordinary claims and figure out what the evidence about them actually says. Uh, and I started looking into the uh, intolerance testing you get for, for people who uh, believe that they're uh, allergic to all sorts of different food stuff. Um, so, uh, who here has got a food allergy or some sort of allergy? It's pretty common, like one in four people have it. I've got a respiratory allergy. I get uh, a lot of hair fever, things like that. And that's what made me start looking to the various different companies out there who claim that they can uh, tell you what you're allergic to by taking a sample of your hair. I don't know if anyone's seen these companies. They're very, very common. There's absolutely loads of them. If you Google, you'll, if you Google just for allergy tests or something like that, you'll come across loads of these companies. They seem incredibly scientific. These are just a sample of the ones that I found yesterday right in this talk. They seem extraordinarily scientific. They promise extraordinary results when you Google and they come up in the Google. Google ads, they come up very high up, and people really listen to the advice given, the, uh, the expertise given, the results given by these companies. They make wholesale changes to their diets as a result. But I thought, given that my job is looking into extraordinary claims, I thought I'd put this to the test. So I actually went to get one of these tests for myself. I went to a, a Herbal Inn, which is a chain of uh, alternative medicine stores all around the country, and I went and gave a sample of my hair away to see what exactly am I allergic to according to these tests. The way they work is you take a little sample of your hair and you, uh, you fill in a, a list of symptoms, all the things that are going wrong, all the symptoms you have in your life, and you pay a bit of money, somewhere between 40 quid and 200 pounds, and they promise they will tell you all of the things that you are allergic to, and you'll get your results back in about a week or two. Here are my results. So I'm mildly allergic to beer and alcohol, things like that. I'm moderately allergic to dairy, which means I have to avoid it for three months. I'm severely allergic to wheat, barley, and pollen, which means I can't be exposed to pollen for, th for three years. I've got to have three years without being near any pollen. But I've never had any problem with wheat or barley or dairy or anything like that. If I listen to those results, I'd be cutting wheat out of my life for three years. That's a massive change to make. So I thought, well, how do I actually test whether these tests are genuine? One thing I could do is go back and get a second test. So I did. I went back to another uh, store on the Herbal Inn chain, got exactly the same test again, took the same sample of hair. My hair hasn't changed. My allergies haven't changed. And yet somehow the results that I got back were different. I'm allergic to different stuff now. So I'm moderately allergic to barley. I'm no longer severely allergic to it, but I'm suddenly allergic to apples and soy and various other things that came out of nowhere. I've had no problems with all this thing before. Why am I suddenly getting test results back that are quite divergent? I can compare them side by side. You can see that if I'd have listened to the first test, I'd be cutting barley out of my life for three years. I'd be cutting onions out of my life for six months. But by taking the second test, I can realize maybe there's something going on here. And I think these tests aren't that accurate. These tests that many people are paying lots and lots of money and putting loads of stock in. Um, if these tests were accurate, they'd be consistent. So I thought, well, how do I test this? One way I could test is get a third test and lie about my symptoms, because my hair is the same, but my symptoms, if I told them everything that was wrong with me is fine and everything that's wrong, that I'm fine about is absolutely terrible, we'd figure out whether it's the symptoms or the hair that they're analyzing. So I filled in this making myself look like the most ill person ever. They asked me, do you have any other health conditions? I said, yes, hypochondria. Put that on the list as well. And so here are all the things that are wrong with me, and suddenly I'm allergic to a hell of a lot more stuff. My hypochondria is caused by, apparently, a rye allergy or an oat allergy or a hay not algae, I would suddenly be making massive changes to my diet off the back of this. Um, and I would argue this is not an analysis of the hair, this is doing something else. This is not an accurate test. These ones that are supposedly scientific, that are all over the internet, are not accurate tests. You can see they wildly diverge across the three tests. So I thought, well, is this analysing the hair? There's one other test I could do. I could do a fourth test, but instead of su submitting a, a sample of my hair, I could submit a sample of someone else's hair. Um, like um, Evie, who's a family member of a friend of mine. So he sent in Evie's hair, and we got Evie's uh, allergy test, and Evie, it turns out, uh, is a dog. Uh, so here is uh, Evie. We took a little sample of Evie's hair, we filled in the symptoms for Evie. It said, uh, do you have a runny nose? We thought, well, she's got a wet nose, so that's probably about the same thing. And we sent off Evie's test. Evie's actually a lovely dog. She's passed away subsequently since we've done this, but what a lovely dog she was. Absolutely uh, wonderful thing. Um, and here's all of the things that Evie is allergic to. Evie has to avoid food colouring. She has to avoid aubergine, chilli, pepper, tomato. But at no point did they say, also, you're a dog. At no point did these 
experts in analysing hair recognised that they were dealing with an animal hair. I would argue these aren't experts in analysing hair. And the reason is they're doing bioresonance testing. This is a bioresonance device. How the test works is you put a sample of hair in one of those holes at the top, and then you run the vibrational energy of 300 different foodstuffs through the hair to see how the hair's frequency changes. They say it's based on quantum physics science. It isn't. It's bollocks. It's complete guesswork. And it's the kind of guesswork that leads people making radical changes to their diet based on nothing at all. And these tests are absolutely everywhere. So what I'd say is uh, your hair doesn't emit vibrational frequencies. Be wary of companies that say they can use your hair to tell you what's wrong with your diet. And never trust a medical professional who doesn't realise you're a dog. Those are my top tips. Thank you very much.